Shine a Light, or this next play is titled Shine a Light by Tito Levis, commissioned by Plan B Theater. Tito Levis is a professional actor residing in Salt Lake City with his husband and three-year-old son. He is constantly educating his child on the benefits of the creatures we find outside and enjoys living on his small urban farm. When he's not tending to the garden or his animals, you'll most likely find him somewhere in the mountains with his family or on set. This play has been commissioned by Plan B Theater. Since 1991, Plan B has developed and produced unique and socially conscious theater created by Utah playwrights. They share stories with a local point of view, as well as global stories from a local perspective. The characters for today's play are... Hi, I'm Deb. I'm a young boy. I'm Dilly, a roly-poly. I'm aunt number seven. I'm aunt number eight. We're aunt brothers. Yeah. I'm Tulip. And I'm Daisy. We're the We're bee, bee sisters. sisters. And I'm an old snail and I'm sleeping. And I am the stage direction and an offstage voice. Scene one. A backyard, fall. The stage is covered in grass and flanked with big shady trees of various colors. There are various types of fall flowers growing downstage right and left. Upstage center is a garden box with vegetables and fruit growing inside, including tomatoes, pumpkins, and strawberries. There is a dirt path curving up to the garden box from stage right, squatting down in the dirt with a strawberry in one hand and a magnifying glass in another is Dev. Where are you? I know you're here somewhere. I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna burn you. Dev, what are you doing? Nothing. Dev. Nothing. So if I walk out there right now, I won't find you trying to burn bugs with your magnifying glass? No. Dev? Ugh, they're just stupid ants. Not to me, they're not. Inside, now. Ugh. Scene two. The stage is now Dev's bedroom. Toys of all sorts are scattered around the room. Clothes on the floor, posters on the wall, etc. There is a window upstage center with his bed underneath it. Dev enters. And don't you come out until you've had a change of heart. Fine. So stupid. Bugs don't even do anything good. During the next few minutes, Dev meanders around his room and distracts himself with his toys before throwing himself onto his bed. He reaches up and opens his window, looking out at freedom for a few seconds before flinging himself back onto his bed and falling asleep. After five seconds of sleep, the lights in the room begin to flicker and swirl. The lights then change colors, making the room look like a massive laser light show. Only light from the window is streaming into the room. A silhouette of a dragonfly in the distance is seen rising up from the bottom of the window. As the song progresses, it gets larger and larger, flying towards the window until the giant dragonfly is in the room. It lifts Dev, still asleep, out of the bed. As Dev is lifted out of the bed, the entire room begins to change. Grass begins to grow up from the ground, growing taller and taller until it's at the height of the ceiling. A few flowers spout up from the ground, the size of cars. Giant rocks roll onto the stage, and from the ceiling in the upstage left corner of, a room, of the room, a giant strawberry grows. By the end of the transformation, the bedroom is completely gone, and Dev and the dragonfly have flown into the distance and have all but disappeared. Scene three. In the grass, Dev is on the floor. Stage left, still asleep. Seven and eight enter as it lights up. I cannot believe you lost the sugar eight. Now what are we gonna bring back to the colony? The queen is gonna be disappointed. I know, I'm sorry, Seven, but that starling was bouncing right in front of me and I got scared. Ugh, starlings. 
They're the worst. They really are. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine. There's got to be something around here we can take back to the colony. Maybe a dead fly or something. You really think we're going to just find a dead fly around here just lying around unclaimed? Well, maybe. I don't know. What is that? Oh, I don't know, but it looks awful, though. Is it alive? Seven kneels down and starts sniffing death. Whoa! No, definitely dead. Oh, that's terrible. Well, but should we take it back? I mean, it looks like it would have some good protein. I don't know. Well, we can't go back empty-handed, and this is better than nothing. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Okay, let's let's lift it up and get it out of here. They <laughs> lift up Dev. Enter Dilly. Oh, hey, fellers. What you got there? Hi. Hey, Dilly. Look what we found. We have no idea what it is. All we know is that it's dead and uh, rotting. Ooh, that what I smell? Mm, smells awful. Can I eat it? We're taking it back to the colony. Sorry, Dilly. Dev wakes up. Seven him and run around. Where am I? What's happening? Who are you? Who are you? You're supposed to be dead. It's a living dead thing. Dead? I'm not dead. There is no way anything alive can smell that bad. Mm -mm. I don't smell. Now tell me what's happening. Who are... Wait, are you ants? Dilly starts to unroll. Of course we're ants, and you were supposed to be our lunch. Your lunch? You were gonna eat me? Duh, we're ants. We literally eat almost everything. Well, you're not gonna eat me. Tulip and Daisy fly in from above. What's happening? We heard screaming. Is everyone okay? Ah! What was that? A zombie creature! A zombie creature? What are you talking about? Well, we thought it was dead because it smells like it's dead, but apparently it's not dead, and now here we are. Enter Tara from the ground near to Dev, causing Dev to come running out screaming. Ah! <laughs> all right, all right, what is all the commotion? So much screaming, and in the middle of the day. Sorry, Tara. <laughs> we just had a very frightening experience with this zombie creature. I am not a zombie. Ma 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 that is exactly what a zombie would say. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really. That thing is clearly not a zombie. Zombies aren't real. Now tell me. Who are you, and what are you doing here? I'm, I'm Dev, and I don't know. I don't even know where this is. Hey, wait a buzz. I recognize you. You're that little boy that's always hurting insects. <gasps> that's right. Hold up, what are you two talking about? He is the light. Uh, excuse me, um. The light? The, the light. light. Oh, the light. <gasps> oh, dear. Hold mm. on. You mean to tell me this little thing is the light? How is that even possible? And how do you know that? Because when we fly around, we see him. All you ants see is a giant light coming down from the sky. And then, boom, you're dead. And normally, he's not this little. And he isn't exactly that little light he holds. He holds this round glass thing that shines the light. It's called a magnifying glass. Well, whatever it's called, are you guilty of using it on us? I, I, look, I just want to get back home. How is this even happening? Well, if you really are the light, and it was probably Anox. 
Come Onyx? on, Dilly. Come on, Dilly. Onyx, that's a myth. Oh, well, how else do you explain it? Onyx is no myth, and this creature proves it. Who is Onyx? Uh, she is an ancient creature who protects our kind from things that would needlessly harm us. Yeah, Onyx. A N A X is Latin for butter uh, for dragonfly. Now, why do I know that? But she's not real. And even if she were, why would she come back now? Uh, hello. He likes to burn ants for fun and step on us when we're just collecting pollen from clover. And pull us apart from both ends. And no, we do not go back from that. And flick us so hard that we go flying through the air. And when we land, we explode like little tiny bombs. Poor Jerry. But, but you're just bugs. And you eat each other all the time anyway. What's the difference? The difference is we are not taking life simply to take life. Yeah. Sometimes we need to do things like that to survive, but it does not include burning or stepping on or tearing apart or flicking other insects for fun. Exactly. We don't ever needlessly hurt another. It would disrupt the balance we've achieved. We all serve a purpose here and we all respect each other and the jobs we do in order for us all to live harmoniously together. Mm-hmm. Oh, I... I didn't know that. Um, what jobs do you all do? Well, Tulip and I pollinate flowers in all sorts, including the flowers and everything in that garden, like the tomatoes and the pumpkins and the strawberries you are constantly eating. Without us pollinating those, you would never have any fruit to eat. Oh, and, and Seven and I, along with all our brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, all that, we dig tunnels under the ground, which helps aerate the soil and helps water circulate down there. We also collect any decaying food and turn it uh, in the good soil. Uh-huh. Which is also what worms do with all the dead leaves and petals and such that fell onto the ground. They eat all of that stuff and turn it into nutrient-rich dirt. And by doing so... The worms help everything that grows out of the ground to grow big and strong. Wow. I mean, that's what my parents told me, but I thought they were lying. That's really cool. Um, what do you do? Me? <laughs> oh, I, I do all that stuff too. But I'm a little bit more hardcore. I eat everything including poop, mm. sometimes my own. Ew. That's not a big deal. We even eat our own vomit. You do? Why? Because it's delicious. <laughs> Don't you like honey? That's our vomit. Ugh. Oh, I used to. Well, listen, Bev. It's, it's, it's Deb. I thought it was bed. Actually, it's Dev. Right, Bev Shmev, listen. Adrax has brought you here for a reason. And I'm afraid until she's satisfied that you've learned your lesson, you'll be stuck here. And probably eaten. Which would serve you right? Eaten? Oh, oh most definitely. But I I've learned my lesson. I'm so sorry. I didn't know any of this stuff. I promise I won't ever hurt any of you again or any other insect, I swear. Actually, I'm a crustacean. Oh, you can hurt the mosquitoes. Those things are a menace. Oh, she's right on that one, girl. Bev, you say you won't hurt us anymore, but how can we believe you? How can she? You've hurt so many of our kind and- Before Tara can finish, a huge gust of wind blows through the grass and a dark shadow appears over everything. All the characters on stage freeze and look up. 
And as the sound of a starling clicking and chirping is heard, an enormous black and orange beak falls from the ceiling. It rises and falls repeatedly in between chirps as all the characters scream and scatter to hide. Dev falls to the ground near to Tara, who has crawled back into the entrance hole. Bev! Bev, now's your chance! Show Annex that you've changed, that you've learned your lesson! How? What do I do? Lead the starling away from us! Protect us! But how? Run! Run as fast as you can! What? No way! What if he eats me? If it doesn't eat you, something else will. This is the only way to show Annex that you mean what you said. Now go! Run! Dev considers this for a few seconds and then stands up and screams and runs. The beak follows him as he zigzags through the grass and runs off stage. Upon his exit, another gust of wind and the shadow follows him off stage. Scene four. Back in the yard, Dev is on the floor near the strawberries, lying on his back with a starling sitting on his chest, pecking at him, lights up. Go away, go away, bird. Dev shoos the bird away and it flies off stage. And he then sits up and immediately looks around on the floor, searching for his new friends. Where are you? Where are you? Come on, come on. Oh, there you are. Oh, good. Let's see, is everyone here? There's the roly poly, and the ants. Oh, there's the snail. Where are the bees? Tulip and Daisy fly up and out of the grass and buzz around Dev a bit before flying off. Oh, good. You're all safe. Dev, what are you doing out there? Just making sure they're safe. Making sure who's safe? The bugs. Oh, really? That's a nice change. Yeah. Uh, actually, one of them's a crusty ocean. Whatever that means. End of play.